I'm going to go through uh, setup on an OCD 3260 and what I've set up is this tool holder, is HSK um, and grind this taper and this straight here and uh, I'll probably go through the, the programming too, I'll probably, thinking out loud, I'm going to um, do the physical setup first and then move on to the, the actual conversation programming and uh, so there'll be some editing here and I'll, I'll splice these videos together and do the best I can but what I have here I'm driving with the cam driver here on the journal that it's not ground uh, try and protect these surfaces here but this is just, a, I'm not sure the size. It's a right and dead center bull nose. But it, what's significant is I'm actually, um, I've actually got this all uh, locked here where everything, everything rotates. The part, the center, everything moves together. And I'll show you that. I'll take that apart and show you that. It's not, it won't take long. But this is a dead center, so this one stays still as the part moves on the tailstock side. And I have this one diamond set up. It's not coming in focus. There it is. Just a cheap diamond um, that I don't care too much about. But it, what I'm doing with that is I'm making a profile on the wheel. And that's the actual taper. On the if you see the profile of the wheel, that's actually that taper there, and then. Of course, I'm grinding this with the straight part of the two-inch wheel. All right. So, I know there's many that are familiar with this type of headstock, um, but so could be some redundant things said here. Um, I'm going to take the driver loose here. It's attached. That's uh, actually a M10 by 1.5. Actually, both are. Um, when I'm, of course, this is all thread. I needed a little longer for this setup here. But uh, anyway, so this comes off. Then I'm gonna uh, tap out the center from the back using a longer, soft rod. It goes through there. Here's thing, something to remember. This. This knob here needs to be open. You don't want it locked in like that. Um, you want to disengage that when you're running a and a live on the spindle bearings, and it's dead here. So it, it all it all spins with the spindle the spindle bearings. But I. You can see, I can, well, you can't see, but anyway, that's how you get to it and knock out the, the center. So with the headstock plate removed, it really was seven, these four out here, and then those three, seven screws to remove. We were able to get to what I really wanted us to see, and that's, that's uh, this driver key right here. You can see, I can move it in like that, and it will um, it will spin only So it will only drive the the this driver here, and with it out, it it will drive the center also, and that's what I wanted to do in this case. Um, a he really heavy part you'd want you'd want to drive that way too. Anyway, you can adjust 
might be a good idea to adjust the, I don't know if I'll get there, I got it pretty close. If, if you can't, you might have to uh, adjust your work spindle RPM a little slower. And that one says 87. And here you can, this is a Proface control. Um, some have this, some don't. And I, would, I could adjust my RPM that way on my work head. With it lined up, with the keyways lined up, I'm able to push that out so it actually en engages and just tighten it up and then put it back on, put the faceplate back on, put the center back on. Now, I, of course, this is a tenth indicator. I don't have a micron indicator with me, but as you can see, it's not terrible. That's about as far as I can reach. And I brought it out here, close to the front too, so I checked two places, and it's still about, just about the same run out. And I got this part on the bench center after I ground with my setup. And let's see. Ah, I did that. Not bad. So I have my work holding back together. Put a little bit of high pressure grease in that center there. And this one all spins together, so. Um, this adjustment for the tail, this is a spring-loaded tail stock. And uh, that's an eight millimeter Allen right there. And I have it set pretty much all the way out. I'll go into tail stock thrust settings on a different video but it, obviously it's important you don't you put too much force on it and when the part comes in here you can start bending the part flexing the part not enough well we just wouldn't hold it right so anyway here's that part so I'm gonna go into some of the programming and conversation that we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna keep this basic, this video here, because um, a lot of this sh should be provided by your your wheel manufacturer. He's gonna provide your surface speed, and a lot of times a process will be worked out ahead of time. Um, what parameters you use, you know, depth of cut, uh, speeds and feeds, work speed, that kind of thing. Um, so here on the ProFace, <clears throat> um, I can set my velocity here. This is in meters a minute. You see, that's not crazy fast there. Um, I think it's 25 meters per second. A lot of times people like to look at it that way. Um, and work speed is set in a program, but you can, this one here is set. Uh, individually uh, so this is manual speed so that someone said it at 87 before I got here but um, anyway I usually look at this screen here on that on that now so the first thing we do we're gonna want to um, we're gonna go to the work and you'll want to, if you have not done it, you'll want to do a, a coordinate setup, a work piece setup. So this is saying we're going to start up the work. It already is started up, but I'm going to say, okay. Now it's going to tell me, okay, come and touch on this diameter. So I'll go touch on it. When I finish this process, I'll measure it, and then I'll enter it in the, the, the final screen um, to set my work coordinate. Now... <clears throat> I'm one-handed right now because I'm trying to video with my left hand and, and do things with my right. But um, so what would we do? We come in and touch on a di diameter. Um, what we'll know, we'll have to. Well, events, we don't have to know the, the measurement right now. We, we will need to know it to finish this process. So we come in with the wheel on. Um, 
here's my setting this is two-handed so both of these have to be pushed in for this for this to for this hand wheel to work for it to jog the axis or the axes anyway you can see we're down this here so if we're in uh, inch mode which I am in this here is 10 millionths this times 10 that's tenths this is a thousandths and this is ten thousandths actually on the on the screen when you move it so like I said ten millionths tenths thousandths ten thousandths so actually when we're touching off the wheel we want to touch off the dresser first so if we go to wheel data here is the dress the stress condition page here we'd go into coordinate set now I've already have this set and since I can't have both hands it's uh, I can't I'm gonna um, not actually touch on that but what it's showing is touch touch right on the, the OD of the wheel so I take touch my diamond <laughs> On the OD of the wheel, number you can go as slow as you want. Now this is these are pretty safe speeds. The times one times ten are really slow, pretty safe. But you go as slow as you need, and then I can usually see a, a glow, and that means that I've hit the wheel. And the diamond kind of glows. So when I do that, it'll I'll hit set, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to hit pass because I've already set this up. So I hit pass, and then it's going to ask, come down to the left side here. You can see this one is point, the, this first one is set pointing here. So that would actually be this guy right here, but I don't have one. I only, I'm only profiling with one diamond because I didn't want a, any kind of blend mismatch. Um, sometimes you get, say this guy here. You were to do a profile on a wheel like I am. This is a pretty simple profile. I understand that, but this diamond here will do a lot more dressing than this guy will. Because this guy's going to dress the taper. This this diamond will wear faster, so you'll have some blend mismatch. Even if you have it right from the beginning, eventually you'll ha you'll have some mismatch. So to have one uh, reduces that quite a bit. Um, and then so pay attention to this orientation of the diamond so then it says bring it to yeah and I'm of course I'm gonna go pass again then there's uh, the one pointing right and that happens to be the guy I have and I do the same thing I, I touch here and then when I get done there it wants me to touch on the right side so I go in and I touch on the left side, I'm sorry. And then it'll probably ask me, yeah, so there's the other one. So, in this case, uh, I set them all. Since I only have the one, I set them, I set them all the same, because I'm not gonna use those right now. So if you had those, it would be a good idea to actually set these up, but I don't have those, and I'm not gonna use the left or the front one for anything right now, so. I, right now these were these were all originally set using this one pointing right that I have in there so I'm gonna pass pass again please reset work coordinate and execute So that part's done. So then we'll go to the work and we'll want to set this up next. And it's coordinate set and it says start work spindle. It happens to already be going, but anyway. And then we're going to touch. Now I'm, this part's already the size. I'm not going to touch. But once again, I would just touch till I see some sparks. Very, very minor amount of sparks when I make contact. 
and then you'd hit set and um, I'm not, the camera's not even in there. So once you touch that, you'd hit set. And then if you had a shoulder, you'd hit set. If you don't have a shoulder, go to where you want your wheel to start. And I'd want, I want mine to start here. Matter of fact, I came in here on the grindstock part and I touched, after I profiled that, I touched right here. Um, just by jogging in the hand wheel and I made my point measured off off of this end here and so that's where I set my zero that was the easiest thing I could think of to do at the time and then so once you get there you'd hit set and then if you had a right, uh, a right shoulder like this, then you'd hit set again, and you'd touch on that shoulder. But uh, straight wheel, we don't really grind on shoulders, so you'd really just want to barely touch on a spark, just to get your location. And then you'd hit set. I don't know the effect of this. So now it's gonna retract. and it moved off and it said it was done. And then here is where I'd put in. So in this case, my shoulder, I, I would say zero because I don't. I, I went exactly to the shoulder. If it, if it wasn't a convenient place to put, um, to touch on, then I would, I would, I need that, I need that distance. Say if I touched over here on this, this side face here, um, then I need to know that distance. I put it in right there. X, I need to know that diameter that I touched on. So I've been measure right now. Same thing with the left shoulder. So if there's a distance off of zero, I'd want to know that. If it's not, if it's right where you touched, to leave it zero. And then you hit save, and it, it should be done. Now, so I'm not going to reset this up. So it, I hit exit, and it asked cancel setting uh, coordinate keep original set I say yes keep the original I don't want to change it and it'll say setting unfinished and it'll process and then it'll be done okay so let's go in and look at the programming so uh, I'll show you where it went so hit the blue and then we go to program and we go list. So here's programs I have right now. That means very little to most of us. This is the one I just did. And to add one, I would just say add and then input a program number. Well, eight's available, so I'm going to go eight and then enter a name. I, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm just going to put eight again. You can put a name or number or both. And then hit input. And now I'm in it. Now, 8 doesn't have anything to it. I haven't added any processes yet. So I go to OPN, they're all blank. And so here I go edit and I go create. Now I can look at these different grinds. And so on that part, the first thing I did was this multi plunge. Okay, so. Based on the wheel, I have two plunges, and then it grinds the uh, the fine and the polish and the traverse. So it plunge, plunge, gets rid of most of the material, and then it, it blends it together. and does a really nice job. That's a popular, that's a good one that is used often. And uh, so if I, if I have it selected, you can see the window is kind of sh shadowed or whatever you call it. Um, I hit input. Oops, I didn't hit input. Here we go. So now you want it wants to know a work diameter. Well, that's this guy. So what I'm using it for is right here. This happens to be pro, this final size is one inch. So if I put that in and I go down and then so here uh, the the first Z 
I just happen to program it this way. If it was off, a lot of people will use this, and I would normally, but I didn't want any measurement error to happen between here and here. So I just went in and touched it and called it zero. So I'm gonna program it zero. So I say zero, cancel. And then input, and then the next one, what you can do is actually move your wheel over here to where you want it. And this is a full center here. You could probably use a half side center and the more you can pull your wheel over because he and use it the last little bit as the finisher that's what you want to do i didn't have that option with my setup um you come over and just bring your wheel over as far as you want it and then you hit this guy right here memory and see that that's a distance it says grind position from so it's eight from zero and it also calculates the wheel in there too, whatever your width is set of your wheel. And if you want to overrun, you can. I leave those, <clears throat> if you're programming off a of print or something, put in your print numbers and then, and then select an overrun. Be careful when you do this. Um, pay attention, do it in a single block because you don't want you, you, you could you could run into your tail stock or something like that if it if it travels too far over retract value now that's a di diametral value so if you have something to clear say I had to get across over this guy right here I'd want to put in my retract value this is 2.5 inches I want a retract value more than that if I was going to come over of course I can't do that on this setup I'm not going to but anyway, so that's what I would do. I'd put in a nice, safe retract value. You could put it as big as you want. It, five inches ought to be plenty. So that's the diameter it's gonna retract to. And then I go in, these are default, and they're not a bad place to start usually, but like I said earlier, vendors, most vendors will help you out with um, this kind of metal removal rate you need. Um, you know, whoever your wheel vendor is. And uh, let's see. Let's go through some things. So, total amount of stock right there. And so, it's 20 inches of stock over diameter. And then it's going to start a fine grind at about two thousandths. Two thou, right there. Four tenths for a polish. Your work RPM's already decided. You can change any of this, all of this order. Uh, say you didn't want to go So the interval um, Can you see the stagger here? That's that's what that's doing or if you just want to Go order so See that every depth is in the same place. So that's what I usually do. I haven't had a need to do another one but I might experiment one day with that yeah so this here both feed means it goes back and forth you can select make it go that way or go that or the other way but I like both feeds so to try it's 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 the most efficient is come down this way feed in a little bit come back the other way I like that Spark out how many times you want it to travel back and forth. Mm, let's see. Well, I don't think I need to go through all of this, but you can, if you look here, they've got it identified by V's. So these V's here, and the 3V is, is um, identified down here. So these are correlated here, these settings. So this is default values here. Escape amount. So I have no shoulder in my case, so I don't have to worry about putting in a shoulder amount. Uh, it's zero. If you had stock on that, you'd want to put that in there. Um, 
escape amount. This, that's how much it's going to come back off to get over here to this arrow, and then again, right? You know, I take that because it'll start here and go here and then go there. So, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then you just hit save and you say yes, and then I have a process. So I have I have that guy, and then I can create another one. So I say edit, and I go. I'm still in program eight, and I called it eight and eight. And you hit create, and then the second thing I did was I went to this traverse here. Now this right traverse is what I went to. So what I ended up doing is I ground this first, and then I ground this, and it made a really nice blend that you can't even see it, matter of fact. So it worked out well. And if I go in and I hit, so if I hit enter, Um, here's here's the inputs I need so I need a diameter to start with so I if I come up here I start on here but my this is a cat this this is a calculation so if I start here at 2.5 you could do that but you need to know your angle so and you don't want you want it on center you don't want included so if you have a print saying included, divided by two, so you get this. Because that's really what it wants. Down here at R, and not mine happens to be like 13.721. Where's the number at? There it is. That's the angle I want. And then you could actually even do a memory on these. You could touch, so you could go in and touch. Uh, you, so you gotta start with it. So if I start at 2.5, that's where I'd want it. It's where I want to put it in my coordinate right here. I'd want 2.5. So I'd bring it over there, hand jog it over there. And then in Z, let me put that in first. And then Z, that number you would want to come over here and actually touch the start point. Now I understand that's going to be with stock on it, but that's a good place to start. Because you could actually, um, you can actually change your your uh, your start diameter right there. But I prefer I prefer to have the, the whatever the print or final value is. So and that one there, you could say, and it's from zero. So if this is zero, then this is negative three or something like that, because that's the way it, the direction it is. You put in negative three there. These numbers are arbitrary, really. I'm not. I'm not going to run this program because it's not proven. The the, the one I the one I'm going to run is the one I created, and I'll show it to you later. But I wanted to go through the program creation process on this one. And then so this one here, this would probably be best to do um, if you if you actually go in and use memory. So if I bring that wheel over here. And then I hit memory, it will record that number and it'll do a calculation with the wheel. Because, uh, I'm not. yeah, so it'll, if you go hit memory, it, it will calculate where it needs to go. You, so that's the probably the best way to do that. If your alignment's good, you probably don't need to use. If you were to, you can adjust that grind wheel head 30 degrees um, if you wanted to. So if you had some uh, offset to put in there, you could do it for that reason. Retract value, um, it's the same thing. If you wanted to retract a certain amount, I don't have anything in the way, so I'm not going to do that. And then there's my default speeds and feeds, actually feeds, feeds and stock. I don't have any speeds in there that I see. Yeah, I do, RPM. So, use what you, use what these, what you know. Most people already know what they're gonna do, but there's the places you enter them. And then you just save. And, and then so, from here, I would offset based on the stock, because I used my print values, I based on the stock, I, if I programmed off of touching it off and I had stock, you'd want to program the actual absolute values 
and then you would just offset down. But I programmed off the print values and then I, I just offset that stock. Now remember, this is just additional offset because I in my program I put in the stock. So we go if we go here and look. See, so right now it's programmed for 20. And if you don't have that much, then you reduce it. But be careful and, and pay attention to what you actually have in these because you'll you'll run your wheel into your part if you're not careful. So I'm just gonna go left and then I'll say save and I'll say no because I didn't change anything. Okay. We're gonna go through a wheel setup actually. If we go to wheel data. Maybe we're in dress condition. Uh, right now, this is what I have it set at. I have uh, per pass dress off eight tenths at ten inches a minute. Dress one time and uh, allowance. Let's talk about that. So, if you have a, a weird geometry, the allowance you put in will keep it off the wheel, and it will gradually it'll gradually make. So I don't, when I did this, I put allowance of, uh, oh, I was over a hundred thousand. So whatever that calculation is, um, from the, this OD to that angle. And I just backed it all off and let it dress air and just come in and, and gently shape, gently shape this, the taper there, this profile. So, that's what allowance is. So you come in it and you put that, and then so it would keep on subtracting the eight tenths, the eight tenths from the allowance first, and, uh, and then and then once it got to zero, it would start paying attention to how many times you tell it to dress, and then your shape should be in your wheel by then. And um, if you go, um, if we hit wheel, and here we're going to select. So here, if you had, usually your wheel comes with a measurement when it's new, or it should. And so, of course, I've dressed it so it's subtracted since then. But every dress, it will it will uh, update your your wheel diameter. So this number here doesn't mean this number here is of course the width. We see how it highlighted it there. It kind of it goes along. It highlights what what you're on, what uh, box you're on, for lack of a better word, right now. And uh, minimum is ten. On that, that you'd probably want to put something. Uh, you'd want to change that to something relevant to what you need. And then here, this minimum width. So these numbers here don't mean anything to me right now. They're not really set. Where I should be have them, and I'm not worried about it right now because I, I'm not using this grinder every day. Um, so if we look here, we can select features of the wheel we want, and and so a lot of times it's it's set to outer diameter, and you just have a plain a plain wheel like this. But I I'm interested. So this here's a here's a preset, and so it's got relief back here. It's got uh, this radius feature on the side and so if you needed that that is nice and then of course here's the right side just like it and then and if you want both so that's a good function or good feature to have and uh, so left taper um, I end up using this profile one there's a right taper one. I didn't use those because I didn't. I wanted more control than that. So here's what I did. I did a profile, and so I'm using just the outer diameter profile. I'm not going to profile anything on the left face, or the right face. So those are turned off. So here, here it says grind wheel type. I'm going to say profile, and I say outer diameter on. And this is my case. Now you may have features you want, but it all, it's all relevant, so I can do this. Uh, this is a default speed, so you may want to change that based on size of your diamond and the grit of your wheel. Um, no, ma mainly size of your diamond. But uh, 
tool offset. I'm not really using that, so I you could either turn that off or set it to zero on the tooltip. But I left it on in case if I started seeing wear and I wasn't getting the geometry I wanted, then I could I could offset some tooltip wear. So my diamond wears right. So um, when it wears, um, it does some things to your dressing. It'll change. It will decrease the accuracy of your your actual geometry and of course um, your speed too you'll have to change it as you get it more of a flat diamond you'll want to go faster across there because you'll just be dull as you dress and you'll be dulling your grits again instead of keeping them sharp anyway um yeah so we've already seen that screen i meant to go if we page back down i meant to go the wheel and page down and so out so this is this is my, where I describe what I want so if we go here start position I always keep it off the wheel this is zero zero remember we touched off at zero zero we should have and so you keep that in mind and then I just put a, a, a really big amount to stay off the wheel so I start over here I'm gonna this in this case I'm gonna go this way and it'll pay attention to what you're doing in the tool compensate or uh, uh, what's called wear compensation tool radius compensation and so this next line uh, these these are uh, these are actually distances or depths they're not this is not diameter here so I'm gonna go minus this is just that. This is just a calculation of that angle that I'm, I'm putting on that that wheel and eventually putting on the part. But yeah, so it's 85 and then keep that one the same. I like a nice square box path here. So and then we go over and this is just kind of redundant, but I wanted to see it do it. So same same X closer Z. So it's right off of it. And then I go right on the side of right on the side at zero here and then minus 73 that should be in the calculation so then eventually i'll end up at 300 thousandths here and then at zero on x so x that's the surface of the that's the outer diameter surface of the wheel and then so i'm across here zero and i want to go minus 2.2 past the wheel because it's wheels around two inches and then i come off of it here so minus 2.2 and in z but x is Point three, and then to finish off I come right back where I came from right there and then you just save it if you've made changes you'd save it I didn't make any changes and if the you can select the line or radius the speed those are separate but when you're in here inserting or, or modifying it's gonna ask you a line right away so if I want to go in here and modify see is it will choose your type again and then so you say line and then it's going to ask for x depth and um, then you say you put something in i'm going to hit cancel this time but you put something in you go right you go right across here really it just wants x and z and then say something was a little bit wrong you have some control here you can offset it you can um, if this wasn't straight happens to be in my case it worked out well but if you need if that's if you got some kind of taper you could correct any alignment here, if you wanted to, alignment or just the location or where it in, where your features ended up. Anyway, I'm gonna say it, cancel. So that's that. That's that's the profile setup. So now let's use the dress uh, cycle we created. Yes, yes. Of course, I'm not going to have coolant on the wheel right now. Something to note, if you dress and your wheel's over here instead of home, it's going to return there, so expect that. It sometimes catches people off guard. 
Uh, so we're ready to run our program. I go in here and I go list and I say seven is my proven program. So I'm gonna say, even though I already have it selected, I say open and I hit seven and I hit input. It says delete offset value and measure data. And I say no. Profile address and I say yes, execute. And there we go. Now, you should be careful because sometimes it will delete your offset value. And this has to do with where it's storing the data behind the scenes. I don't, I don't have a good explanation for you on this. But so check this. If you have, see, I have quite a bit of offset here because I don't really want to touch the part. The part's already finished. So from here, I'm going to make sure it's in memory. And I look up here and I see program 7, grind program name. And then so from here I'm able to cycle start. And what I will suggest is you use your override and your single block control. Make sure you have things set up right. I mean, you don't want to plow in that. Everybody should care about <laughs> their safety. So what I'll do is uh, I'll, first cycle, I'll first cycle start it and then I'll put in single block and then then I just hit single block again. I should get it. It should go into my first process. Turn single block off for a second. Okay. Now it wants to come in. See, multi plunge is the first thing it's going to do. And it's going to come in. So now I'm going to put it back in single block. And I see my distance to go. And I'm just going to slowly keep checking that distance to go. And then where it is so I'll let it come in relatively close and then I'll check the distance to go see I still have it in single block so that it's not gonna go it's just gonna go to this move and then it'll stop so it says I'm 2.86 away in diameter and that looks probably about right so I'm going a little bit more a little bit more than that and it looks lined up right I'm 600,000, it's a little more than away. Yeah, I'd say that's true. Plus, with my offset, we're at four. And we're at zero. And of course, we're off the part. You don't want to be on the part at this time. It's going to feed into the part. And then from here, I can just uh, take it off single block. And I can hit uh, cycle start again. And then you can see it's going to feed into the part 78 thousandths, 7 tenths, 40 minutes. Let's see. And it's running the cycle. And I'm not going to continue it because there's no reason to go into that or spend the time on that but um, everything looks right